Снайпер! Ганта! Прикрой меня! Я должен перезарядиться! Well, folks, I was going to do the Prototipo 6 video. The Russian servers already have it, so I thought let's log on and take a look. But it turns out, the Russian common test has a new patch, 1.30, with a bunch, a slew of ridiculous high-tier vehicles. A British S-Tank, because everybody gets an S-Tank nowadays. <laughs> Two flamethrower American heavy tanks. A cross between a Emil and a T-58 heavy tank. Autoloader 155. It's ridiculously looking, it's super ugly, but large caliber gun with an autoloader. Also, burst fire 120 SFAC with 8 rounds of burst. 16 rounds in the clip. Because why not? <laughs> Stats be damned, realism be damned, that will melt the barrel. <laughs> Ridiculous. So let's take a look at the hidden vehicles of the Russian common test for 1.30, and let's get started with the most familiar out of these bunch, the Project Murat, or Char Murat. This vehicle is already on console, and already on Blitz, but the Russian server has it at tier 10 compared to our premium tier 9 version. So practically a sniping autoloader of sorts, like a autoloader mixed with an AMX-30 and a Leopard 1, but quad track system finally has been implemented to all quad track vehicles. So I just noticed this, but this vehicle has the same track mechanics, the spare track mechanics as the Yotanks. They're doing it for all the vehicles. Like the Zlog P, the AE Phase 1, and they don't have the ST66 for now, so only applies to this type of mounting of the tracks, but it's at tier 10 with a spare track system. So, yeah, Russian servers are doing some good mop up work, right? They also applied it to the AE Phase 1. Surprisingly, I thought they're just going to apply to new vehicles, but no, no, they're tidying up the house. They're tidying up everything. So originally, AE Phase 1 is this vehicle right here. There's a testing version right here. So original version doesn't have the track upgraded. So the same old tracks, you get your tracks blown off and you're still stuck. But they're testing the spare track system on the AE Phase 1 T. The stats are the same, but this thing gets the spare track system. Similar to the Zlog P, the tier 10 Polish super heavy tank that we just covered last time on 1.29, but Zlog P, that's a spoiler for next video. <laughs> so this vehicle has quad tracks as well does get the quad track system so they don't have the st66 so we get a few vehicles they get a few vehicles it's a, like a trickle down effect from russian server to our server but they don't have the weird brother of an object 283 for now so we cannot take a look at that vehicle but yeah quad tracks actually a thing for this vehicle which is nice auto loader 105 dpm is not bad for auto loader 2 it's 3.5 seconds, but I mean, still, that DPM is pretty good for our autoloader. Accuracy could be better though. Crew of 3. Yep, accuracy could be slightly better. Same goes with the aim time, but you have the burst fire capabilities. 20 seconds to reload the clip, which is not bad considering, but yeah, not a bad DPM based machine. But yeah, it's still coming to our server as a tier 9 without the spare track system, obviously. 2000 health, which is a little bit more than the Leopard 1s or Bat Chats, but 160 hull front sloped, 200 on the turret. 160 slope, that is real. Oh my god! The armor is so much better, huh? <laughs> Where the hell is the 160? Oh. Bottom plate is one. Whoa, 200 millimeter effective. 
Cupola is not a thing. Cupola is 50, but it's super well sloped. Mantlet is thick. Mantlet at uh, 330. <laughs> Slope 120 at a very good angle on the upper plate. This thing actually has armor on the Russian server. Our version is like a AMX 30 wannabe. <laughs> Mixed with a leper one without armor, so this thing actually has armor. Holy crap! Size scrape? Not really. Yeah, 60. Yeah, you don't size scrape. <laughs> this thing actually has armor. Also, turret armor with 12 degrees of gun depression. Yeah, Russian server has a different meta, right? Their balancing is off the charts. Their concept number five, the wheeled uh, British medium tank. Has no downside going through mud. It's 0.12 terrain resistance. So normally it's like 1.5 or 2 for going through mud. That thing will go through mud the same speed as pavement. Which is utterly broken. So yeah, their balancing is off the charts. No question about it. But this thing has armor, holy crap. And ability to pull back if you get your front tracks blown off or your rear tracks blown off. From like artillery or something. That's pretty good. Yeah, mobility's not bad too. Could use a little bit better top speed, but that's still fine, right? Turbocharger, buff, buff it to 55. Not bad. Camo. Kind of chunky, but not the worst. Not like a Patton. And view range is alright. This is a good tier 10 assembly shop if it comes to our server. This thing is actually very... This thing is like a 7.5 with the turret armor and the burst fire capability, right? This is this is so much better than a freaking Vickers Mark III. <laughs> so much better than Vickers main battle tank. Oh, it's not even a question. Okay. Alright, moving on. Taurus CA. British S tank. It's a premium. Crew of three. Uh... Somehow the radio operator is a little bit different. The crew loadout is a little bit... It doesn't matter nowadays with the skill change. Correction. The Russian server didn't get the uh, crew skill changes. I don't believe. Yeah, they, don't, they don't have the double skill system. They still have the old skill system where you pick. Ah, ha, ha, they're behind in that aspect, I guess. <laughs> they don't have the double... Double crew skill thing, special bonus skill, so technically we're still better at that point, but crew of three. It's a 105L7. Kind of looks stubby though. I mean, perhaps because it's inside the vehicle, so that might be the case, but 105L7 for all S tank is generally the basics, right? The usual. But DPM's not bad. Is it AP or APCR? Aim time is quick, quick enough, but there is a siege mode, obviously. So it gets better accuracy, presumably, in siege mode. We still cannot switch in the game client from siege mode to basic travel mode, but DPM seems pretty decent. It's better than the S1 STRV, but at the cost of penetration. So not as much pen by like 30 or so millimeter, but you have better DPM. So aim for weak spots. It's a completely fixed gun. So you're not moving the gun about. Yeah, it's completely fixed compared to the Kampfpanzer 07HK, but... And the auto cannon doesn't really work in a sense. So it's a big chunky body too. The ass end is more prominent than the actual S tank. It looks more like a SU-122V in a sense, but huh, yeah, it's a big body. How good is the actual shell if it's sniping all the time? It's APCR standard. Shell velocity is quick, so no low velocity gun like the Caliban or something, or a Gonzalo, but high explosives. Hesh T. High explosive anti tank squash head? Huh. That has the pen, but it is. The name is Hesh. The icon is Heat. 
I don't know how this pertains, but it's likely a heat round in a sense, but also Hesh for the high explosive penetration is good. So it's like playing with a 7-1, except you're a tank destroyer. They put it as Assault tank destroyer, not Sniper tank destroyer, surprisingly. Yeah, Assault, not a Sniper. So you are front line with this vehicle. And rightly so, it has the health, 1400 health, and 120 hull front. That's better than the 110 that we just covered on the Cust, the object Cust. How good is the armor? Is the tumor, is the tumor is a thing. <laughs> oh no, tumor is a thing, but yeah, upper plate is auto bounce all the time. There is a cupola on the front, so weak spot, but... Gigantic cupola, 225 is not bad for a cupola, but still big. <laughs> so yeah, big eyesore. <laughs> Lower plate 120, upper plate 120, auto bounce, auto bounce city. So you really have to shoot at the cupola. The British people were looking at Swedish S tank designs. They're like, how the hell do you cram yourself in there? Ah, fudge it, we'll put a cupola on top, why not? If the commander gets shot, so be it. <laughs> but the goddamn... Now, driver cupola also is a weak spot, but... Side armor is slope upwards. At 57, in the back. So... Yeah, armor is... I mean, if you don't have the cupola, this thing cannot be defeated at the front, right? Other than high explosive anti-tank rounds. It doesn't have the... The fence. But armor is pretty good, health is pretty good, mobility, eh, not the worst, so aggressive, S tank, real aggressive, but the Q plus still kind of defeats the purpose, like with the R2D2 that we saw on the cust yesterday, so technically there's still a weak spot, but it is still 225, go chill, uh, go chill sink, okay. 30-ish tons. Camo is better than the Cust, surprisingly. Uh, for some reason. It's a Russian server. And view range is slightly better, but not that much better. Only 10 more, meter, uh, 10 more meters. Play the Turtle. Turtle's fine as an aggressive vehicle, right? This thing could snipe if the accuracy in siege mode is better, right? But then again, the Turtle could also snipe. This thing has better mobility than the Turtle, obviously. And not bad, not bad still, right? If you remove the cupola, this thing could not be defeated other than gold shell. Gold high explosive anti tank at that matter, not APCR. But make the auto cannons work. Yeah, just make the auto cannons work. They, they won't do it. Russian server might be able to, but still, that's a lot of work to implement auxiliary secondary fire for different armaments. But hey, flamethrower heavy tank. Looks like a fatter T95 E2, in a sense, or TL1 LPC. Uh, American T95 program. Quad tracks too. Does it work with the quad tracks? They they probably do. The Russians are very meticulous about these stuff, or at least less the uh, server or less the studio. But if they're going to do for all the quad tracks, why exclude this vehicle, right? So, I mean, the quad tracks are not game breaking. Nah, I don't feel it making a big difference when I'm playing my yo tanks, but the caliber looks like a 90, except there's a nozzle on the end for a flamethrower. So, why the hell do you even need the gun barrel in a sense? Why do you even need a fume extractor or something, right? We already have a nozzle of a flamethrower. Supporting the gun? But why the muzzle brake? I think they just took the 90 and just like, ah, let's just put a flamethrower in the middle. And we can keep the gun barrel to support the flamethrower, but... Yeah, you don't need a muzzle brake for a flamethrower. You don't need a fume extractor for a flamethrower, right? Superfluous. So, special tank reward from... Third personal mission set coming to the Russian server. It's a flamethrower, has 70mm pen for flame fuel, but 6,000 DPM. <laughs> Crew of 3, 
Obviously, no loader. You don't need to load the flame fuel. So, well, obviously making sense, but... Yeah, 6,000 DPM. Accuracy, it's a flamethrower. You're spreading the flames. Fine. Aim time is actually quick. It's like, not even a second, but... Accuracy is crap. 8 degrees gun depression. You don't need, you don't need gun depression. <laughs> 200 meter coverage. Of flame. Gold shell deals more damage. Gold fuel deals more damage. Has the same pin, but is there a downside to flame fuel difference between spending more money? Otherwise, it's pay to win, right? It's pay 200 meter coverage. Uh, 600 flame fuel per minute thing, I guess, or second? Or 600 damage per se? No, that's per minute. Uh, yeah, reloads quickly, obviously enough, but 10 damage per flame. Let's see, shell is flame fuel and gold flame fuel. Ah, you get better DPM with better alpha damage of the flame, but you have less coverage by 100 meters. So, panic mode or danger close flame deals more damage. But if you want to lob it, you can cover freaking 200 meters. That's not that bad. That's like two squares of the minimap. Slightly, right? On a 1000 by 1000. That's not bad. Oh, I mean, you have to get very close to flamethrower people. How good is the armor if you want to go cl up close? 1800 health seems about average. That's fine for a tier 8 heavy, but. Or tier 9 heavy, tier 8 heavy. But armor wise, 350 at the turret front. Yeah, you're not penetrating the turret other than super gold shell or other flamethrowers, in a sense. Cupola is small at 225. That's a good cupola. That's a very good cupola, in a sense. It's rounded too, but... Yeah, if you don't hit square on, it's like 250. It's also a sliver. It's not like a bulbous M1 cupola. Upper plate, sloped 120. About 250-ish millimeter effective. 290 for the... Uh, for what? Underneath the upper plate is 290. And 230 for the drive wheel support. That's a thick ass lower plate. <laughs> oh, 260, 290, and 320 at the junction between upper plate and bottom plate. That is a thick ass plate. But then again, you're close. You're danger close, so. Side armor is 120 with 5 millimeter of space armor? The tracks are not 5 millimeter. There's no way the tr tracks are 20. Yeah, the space armor is there. 5mm of side skirts. Side armor's good too. Double track system too. Oh, all the mechanics into one vehicle. That's good. Uh, mobility. It, top speed is kind of slow. Chugging away at 25 kilometers per hour top speed and only 13 horsepower per time ratio. So it's not the fastest. But, if this thing gets way too close, you're getting burned. <laughs> Does it stun with the flamethrower? The object 1560, one the cockroach, Russian tier 8, assault artillery cockroach with the flamethrower, has a stun effect with the flamethrower. So, it doesn't show on this thing, but... If this thing gets a stun effect, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> Camo, heavy tank, more like a Patton. Speaking of which, it's not bad for a heavy, but... Eh. And 350 meters of U-Range, so blind. Yeah, super blind. Oh, God. I mean... How the hell do you deal with stuff like this, right? You would think gold shell into... The bottom plate will pin. No, <laughs> that's not the case. You have to shoot the upper plate. Definitely shoot the upper plate, but... Side armor could side scrape. 
It just basically face hugs you and flamethrowers you. Is there splash damage with the flamethrower? That's a, also a big case. So if it is, goddamn, this this thing is good. <laughs> it's just stupidly. F I mean, it's blind. It's a close range, dumb vehicle, right? Does not take any skill cap or skill level to play this thing effectively. You just drive towards enemy, press a button, they burn. So yeah, low IQ vehicle, but hell, it's fun. <laughs> it's stupidly fun. All right, moving on to the tier 10, the actual tech tree version of the vehicles for flamethrowers, but looks like a AAT-60 at tier 10 with a slightly pike-shaped hull front too. Huh, Astron FL. Yeah, definitely the Space Age turret design, similar to the Starship or the AAT-60 or the Concept 1B. Uh, not a bad looking vehicle, also quad tracks, so definitely could move about if you get your tracks blown off, but it's more streamlined than the T95 medium tank-esque of a body design, so also has a L7 looking like gun barrel with the flamethrower in the middle of it. How the hell does the flamethrower work? Is the fuel coming outside of the actual nozzle or inside the nozzle like between the barrel and the actual middle bar or is it in the middle bar altogether right where's the ignition like the sparkler thing to not light the flame fuel i have no idea how flamers are designed but okay <laughs> yeah pretty much you could just take the same model remove the flamethrower and that would be a good medium tank or heavy tank, right? So, kind of ingenious how they're doing it. But, if this vehicle comes to our server in the form of a regular gun, they could just remove the little nozzle in the middle and just call it a regular vehicle. That will work. That's actually ingenious when you think about it, right? Pretty smart. Three-man crew. No lead for a loader. It's a flamethrower, of course. Deals the same damage, actually more damage than the base 10 damage on the Clark, the TF2, but Gold Flame does even more damage. 9,000 DP. <laughs> it has to get pretty close to utilize the 9,000 DPM, but spare track system, of course, makes it work. And let's clean house, make everything work. 10 degrees gun depression. 20 elevation. Traverse is actually pretty quick for a heavy. That's more like a medium, fat medium tank. 200 meters of coverage. 9,000 DPM. Accuracy is crap, but you don't care about accuracy. You're throwing flame. So I think they model the flame effect like multiple little pebbles that you're throwing, right? So each is a contact point, each dealing 15 damage. But that's how you model flame i guess it's not exactly a wave of flame fuel or something but let's see gold shell or gold fuel is less in coverage and you have more alpha so panic button super fuel <laughs> yeah they don't have our system they still have the old crew scale system yeah they still have the old crew scale with signal boost oh god Crap on a stick. Relay. Crap on a stick. Calls for vengeance. Crap on a stick. But yeah, flame fuel. Pay money to deal more damage at close range. You're already at close range, but can it lob the shell? Lob the flame over cover? Can it stun too? Another big question. 2,250 health. So a little bit more than assault. Medium tanks, or now assault breakthrough medium tanks like the Object 277 or T110E5 or the Yo tank, slightly. 300 millimeter at the hull front, 300 at the turret front, it's rounded. Is it impenetrable? Practically, yes. <laughs> God. About 300 millimeter effective upper plate, and about 400 for the bottom plate. You gotta be shitting me. There is a shot trap of 40 
hull roof. So if you manage to shot trap underneath the mantlet, or technically if you could jam the shell if you're tall enough into the hull roof, but that's a freaking sliver of 40 millimeters. You have a cupola, but the cupola is still rounded and small at 185 baseline, so Man, armor on these vehicles are extreme. 5mm space armor, 90. It's not as thick as a Clark on the side armor, so. Ah, oh, hell, you're not side scraping. What the hell is side scraping for? You're driving face first and face hug and flamethrower people in the face. So, yeah, yeah you're, you're close range. <laughs> Definitely close range. The rest of the armor, artillery shell bait, 40 ish. Seems fine. But yeah, armor on the flamethrower seems pretty whacked up, right? Very good. I mean, it's the concept. You have to gain close. So these are dumb vehicles. Low IQ, driving to your face and flamethrowers you. It's stupidly fun. Yes, it is. But you don't need to turn your brain on to play these things. 17 horsepower per ton ratio and 40 kilometers per hour top speed. Compared to 25? This thing's even faster driving to your face. <laughs> Weighs 50 tons. That's not fair. If this thing comes with the map setup, right? If it's a current meta on our server, this thing is close to a 10 out of 10. Easily 8 out of 10, no question. Easily, based on the maps. If it's Prokhorovka, that's a different story, right? If you're in an open field map, yes, you get picked off. Your flames aren't going to do squat. But if it's Himmelsdorf, if it's Ruenberg, you're going to kick ass and chew bubble gum all the time. <laughs> you're going to fuck shit up <laughs> with Disney. Holy crap. 17 and 40. That is ridiculous. Camo, eh, not the worst. View range, still 360, so it's still kind of blind, but if it's city map, you don't give a shit. You just drive towards people and flamethrowers people. Okay, <laughs> alright, not ridiculous enough. Let's move on. We have a couple more super ridiculous thing. H3. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit, what is this? It looks like a mill, but... Bastardized with a 155 autoloader. The track design is also kind of weird at a sloped angle too. The turret is massive. It's like the Yo tank, the M4 Yo, but the back end looks more like a Emil. Large ass cupola on top. It's not that pretty. <laughs> Holy shit. That's a massive gun. On a weird looking chassis. Also the driver bulge looks elevated too. Right? For the driver in the front. But. Uh, give us the T-58. Right? They're, they're not going to. <laughs> Autoloader 155. Big ass gun. It does take 7.5 seconds between each shot. And there's only 3 shots. Right? It's not as devastating as you would think. Like 3 seconds or 2 seconds between each shot does take a while but it's like a Fosh 155 with a turret and anything with a turret is a lot better than anything without that's why the Waffen Trigger off E100 has a better performing gun than a Fosh B right you can adjust the target faster but oh god that <laughs> accuracy is crap aim time is kind of crap 0 0.42 accuracy eh, if you play enough Russian tanks it feels right at home DPM, not that bad in comparison to a large caliber gun, right? I mean, it's not the worst. Not like the WZ-116, in a sense. The F2 or F3, I forgot the name, but that thing needs a buff. Or Rysoroni has a sub-2000 DPM. So, yeah, DPM in comparison, not that bad for that alpha. 255mm of pin, large pin. Also, gold shell is kind of high explosive end the tank. High explosive end the tank for gold, 330. Shell velocity gets 
not that much big of a change. Yeah, shell velocity is not great. This is close range derping of the guns. Unless you want to go all high explosive. <laughs> That's... You know somebody going to try three round high explosive. 155s. <laughs> Stupid setup. You're not supposed to carry high explosive with such a long reload, but why not? What the hell? <laughs> 2200 health, like a E5. Not that much in comparison to 2500 or so. 200 hull front, 300 turret front. How good is the actual armor? Thick. Oh, thick. I mean, yeah, it's there's 180, but it's well sloped. Baseline, it's about 330 or so effective. 380 for around the gun. It's an oscillating gun too. It's thick. Cupola is 240 cupola. That's like the OE5 cupola. It's good. In a sense. Currently it's like 220 cupola or something. But yeah, old cupola on the E5 is not a weak spot. Driver hatch is a weak spot. Upper plate, slope 100. Very good angle. Bottom plate is 200 sloped. Drive support for the drive wheel. Kind of a weak spot, but the main weak spot is the cupola. Especially the driver cupola. Side armor, 65 for the hull. Eh, hull size suck. <laughs> it's like Emil. It's completely like the Emil, other than the gun depression. If this thing gets 12 degrees of gun depression, that would be insane. But sloped cupola is also not that weak. <laughs> Side armor's crap. So like the Emil, always point the front. You cannot side scrape, but it doesn't need to. This thing has the burst fire. Does it move like a dime? Yeah, not the worst. Definitely not the worst. 14 horsepower turn ratio with 36 kilometers per hour top speed. Not the worst, right? I mean, this seems more balanced, quote unquote, than the flamethrower. Yes, you have a crappier DPM. Yes, you have to work with the accuracy and the cupola, but it still fucks hard. <laughs> you have to shoot the cupola, but the cupola is 240. I mean, if the cupola is like 150, fine. The vehicle feels kind of balanced, but it's not. Yeah, Russian server has weird balancing. Camo, crap. I mean, it's not the worst of crap, but it's definitely not as good as the Astron FL. 400 meters of view range, as expected. Your single shot or your cyclic autoloader gun than a flamethrower. Uh, yeah, this thing is ugly. <laughs> It's massive. What is, what kind of design is this? Where the tracks goes above the actual hull. Looks like the hull gets elevated too at the front, like crossing riverbanks or shallow water that you need to elevate your lower plate just so your driver doesn't get drowned or something. I don't know, but yeah, weird design, real weird. And finally, a roided up. SFAC now with a 120 not a double shot but it's <laughs> it's a burst fire 120 millimeter the only other vehicle with a burst fire capability is the Charmadel 75 with a 100 millimeter burst it's three round burst compared to this which is eight rounds <laughs> of burst so imagining eight shells of 120 in each drum and you have two drums loaded now granted it does take more than a minute to load this vehicle so you cannot just go loading or just dumping shell right off the bat but there's actually a camera no that's not a camera that's uh periscopes bunch of canteens radio support uh whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, fire extinguisher. So it's a basic Waffen trigger with an autoloader thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, we already know how SFAC 105 at tier 8 on the Russian server is dramatically better at DPM than our version. But they call it the Schneider Ole Ole. But this thing, 
ridiculous. So I'm presuming paper armor everywhere around, but autoloader 120, burst fire autoloader 120, 16 rounds in the clip, crazy, two pat or two patches or batch of the autoloader shell. So technically one burst fire is eight rounds. It takes 0.5 seconds between each shot. So they, this thing will spew out the eight shots automatically with half a second in between. It takes about 70 seconds to load. <laughs> okay, but accuracy, aim time, accuracy is debatable, right? How good is the after firing accuracy? So if you're just spew out the shells, then your gun should be elevating, right? If it's like any other FPS, you cannot just hold down the spray button and expect the target to be on the same reticle, right? You're supposed to get a like el gun elevation kickback or something, but I don't know how this gun works. <laughs> so aim time is quick, but 6 degrees gun depression, 130 degrees per side. It is a fixed mounted tank destroyer. It's a support, not a sniper. But only 257 millimeters of pen for 400 alpha. So standard, 120. But eight rounds <laughs> per burst of two batches of eight rounds. So total of 16 rounds. And switching from one clip or one batch to another batch is three seconds. It takes half a second between each shot. So. You're spewing out the shells in a weird manner for a realism distortion thing. It's not realistic. How the hell do you spew out 12 rounds or 16 rounds, right? In a matter of seconds. I mean, America, if this technology exists today, America bought that shit up automatically. We would love to dump shells like this. It's not realistic. Not even... <laughs> I mean, that would be insane. Spewing out that many shells of high explosive. That would be nuts. From an airplane? From like an AC-130? Holy crap! Then Christmas comes early. <laughs> Just bombard the shit out of every Middle Eastern country there is. <laughs> yeah, it's not a realistic thing. Not even close. 1800 health? Eh. I mean, okay. It's about the same as a bat chat. Paper armor all the way around. <laughs> How the hell do you incorporate such a thing? Yeah, it's paper armor. <laughs> and there are no gaps in the armor, so you cannot shoot through the vehicle. The gun is technically a magnet thing, but you're still pinned. Okay. Oh my word. The auto-loading mechanism does not count. You could damage the gun. Yes, you could damage the gun, but it doesn't count towards damaging the health of the vehicle. So it's like with their ACF, uh, SFAC 105. Compared to our version, this bunch of mechanics behind the gun barrel is actual armor or actual collision model where you get your health, you get your health damage if it, gets, if it gets shot at. This thing doesn't count. I'm slurring. <laughs> Stumbling, stuttering Sam. All right, yeah, this thing doesn't count. That is... I mean, granted, you're just high exposing the side of the hull or side of the superstructure or fighting compartment. But still, that's like 40% of the vehicle you're not counting as actual damage. Okay, fine, I guess. 18.8 <laughs> 8 horsepower per tire ratio, not the slowest. And 55 kilometers per hour top speed, so 6 degrees gun depression. Yeah, it is support. But. I don't know how you play this thing effectively as a sniper. Camo could be better, but not the worst. I mean, it's like a medium tank at this point. Your range, all right. But do you just spam all gold shell like every other scum in AMX 50 Bs, right? Just spam all gold shell with the 120. Yeah, 340 millimeter pen. Is it high explosive in the tank or APCR? High explosive in the tank, so just spam all gold shell. And <laughs> drive next to a heavy tank and dump shell. You know, said Scott, this thing is cancerous. You think the Waffen Trigger nerf version of a 128 
is toxic. No, this thing's even more <laughs> What the hell? So Russian server, obviously, balancing is out the window. We already saw this, we already know this, but yeah, these vehicles are kind of ridic. So I'm surprised the, the Murat has armor. I'm surprised they're doing the quad tracks for all the vehicles, including the AE phase one. I'm surprised that this thing is not cancerous. It is. I mean, if you have open field maps, yeah, you get bombarded by artillery, by aircraft. Yeah, real, realistically speaking, it's not that great. But in World of Tanks meta, in World of Tanks map design, freaking ridiculous. <laughs> so there you go, folks. We'll cover the skins for the next round, as well as the armor value for the tier 11s. They still haven't incorporated the tier 11s into the actual game. Other than the dev server. I saw some videos of the dev server with the actual model. But for now, I cannot see the tier 11s. Like the T or the BZ T70. I cannot see this thing. I can only see it on tanks.gg. So for the next two videos, we'll go through the special skins in this patch for the Russian server. As well as the armor value of the tier 11s. But for now, yeah, I had enough of tier 10 or high tier <laughs> weird vehicles. <laughs> so as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs> Why